So after that reading from Matthew 21, 1 to 11, our proclamation entitled Defiant Humour. Let us pray. Jesus, our Saviour, speak to us now through your word in these times. Amen. Well, the candle is still burning brightly, but out there, well, it's getting darker. And we're reminded more and more in our news that these are difficult days and that we probably haven't yet realised how life-changing these times are and what we might have to face. And now, here we are marching into Easter. Palm Sunday and processions and the cries of Hosanna. That word Hosanna, by the way, means save us, our rescuer, our king, our liberator. So it was a cry of hooray. The one who can help us is here. How meaningful those cries of Hosanna are to us then, this year. God save us indeed. So here was Jesus processing grandly and humbly into Jerusalem with the dark clouds of Easter starting to close on him also. Did he know what was coming? Probably. He didn't need supernatural powers to see that all this was leading to a cataclysmic clash of some kind. But this was no time for moping and defeat and withdrawal into himself. And that's why the thing I want to highlight this Palm Sunday, in these threatening times for us also, was that this was a staged palm procession that was an act of defiance, an act of defiance against defeatism and despair. So Jesus chooses a donkey for his big procession into Jerusalem. Now, we might miss the humour. We often do miss the humour that Jesus had. We lose it in the English translation. We lose it in all our religiousness and with all our reverence of what's expected of us. But this action is one of many clues in Scripture of Jesus' humour. And it's not humour just for the sake of a laugh. It's humour with a hook. Jesus is doing something prophetic in this action to make a protest. Now, I've pulled off the shelves behind me this great book by Marcus Borg and Dominic Crossan. And in this book, they'll call The Last Week, they explain that leading into Passover festival in Jerusalem, with all the extra crowds of worshippers flooding into the city, and where tensions would often brew, what the Romans did is that they felt they had to come down heavy on the people. So, to keep the peace at this turbulent time, they would bring in large numbers of extra troops. And as these extra troops entered Jerusalem, marching grandly in by the great gate with all the crowds watching, it was to be a sign to these people that the Romans were the ones with the power and that you people are under our thumb, and you'd better behave, or else we'll crush you. Now, at the front of the column probably would have been the commander of the troops, with all his shiny armour, all looking very grand, and riding his great white horse, maybe. So now, do you see the joke? Here is Jesus coming in the other gate, the back gate, but not on a great white horse, but riding this pathetic little ass, this donkey, and coming not in force, but in peace. Now, I reckon Jesus would have appreciated the humour of all this, as subversively they took the mickey out of the Romans. I reckon Jesus would have had a smirk on his face as he trotted through Jerusalem with crowds yelling their hosannas. This was a defiant, cheeky parody and a powerful statement. We are not going to let you Romans put us down. So, 
the good news for us today. As our world and as our winter closes in on us, is that we too will not surrender to our sadness and troubles. Because we have a saviour who will liberate us from all this. Not a power-wielding oppressive king, taxing us, milking us, controlling us, and promising to fix everything, but a humble king on a donkey and with an empowering sense of humour. Most of all, a king who loves us, who is even willing to lay down his life for us so that we too might ride bravely through all this, defiant and confident that God will save us, whatever happens. Now, there are three things that I'm very grateful to my parents and my family for. The first was the love and security they gave me. Second, the faith that my Methodist heritage over generations on both sides of my family gave me. Two very important things. But thirdly, the third thing I'm appreciative of from my family is a good sense of humour. The ability to laugh at things and to laugh at myself. Humour, it's so important. And especially in these times. So check out those humorous clips that um, are on the internet there of those people who are creatively and humorously doing those wonderful things in times of isolation. My favourite is the um, family from the UK who have posted the song from Les Mis. They've rewritten the words to One Day More, expressing their stresses with each other. It's actually a very perfect choice of song because that song is also a song of defiance. So, we will laugh, we will live, and even if we don't, we have a saviour who with humour and dance and defiance will lead us through to the other side into what he has won for us. So, have a happy and sombre and liberating Easter in Jesus. Hosanna. Amen.